Truly, I say to you, your existence will be a continual struggle and war, and so the human peoples will smite you with their hostile thinking and enmity. You will find neither rest nor peace in the country stolen by your ancestors by way of falsehood, deceit and fire because you will be haunted by the inherited burden of these murders through which your forefathers assassinated the ancient inhabitants of this part of the earth and deprived them of life and material goods. Hence all of this righteous blood will fall upon you, this blood which was shed by your forefathers and through you, and which will still be shed by you and your close and distant descendants into the faraway future. There will be hatred against you in this world. Even the new age will bring you neither rest nor peace until you retreat from the land you took by force, or until you make a conciliatory peace, create brotherly trust and unity with your enemies, and renounce your wrongful and stolen rights. You brood of snakes and vipress, this will happen to you into the distant future. Yet not by accident will you have a fortuitous chance in the new age when my teachings on creations, justice and laws will again be disseminated. So you may then seize the opportunity to end and settle the world's hatred against you by means of an honest peace. Therefore, in the new age, heed my teachings, which are truly the teachings of the laws and directives of creation. They heed when they will be taught anew because this will be the sign of the time at which many things will change. The power of the mighty and tyrants will crumble, so that the peoples of all humankind become free. In the coming distant new age, heed the renewed presentation of my teachings of the spiritual and creational forces and laws and directives, which are valid for all times and throughout the universe so that you may act according to my counsel and that there may be tranquility and peace among you and all human beings in this world. Truly, truly, I say to you, all this shall be fulfilled and come upon you and upon your people long into the future, as I have told you. Chapter 25 The Prophecy And Jmandal walked out of the temple and his disciples came up to him because they wanted to show him the temple's structure. He, however, spoke to them, Look at all this. Truly, I say to you, not one stone here will remain upon the other without being broken. The Israelite people trespassed against life and the truth, and they built this city on human blood. These people are divided into Israelites, who call themselves sons and daughters of Zion, with whom I do not identify, and who want to kill me, and Jews, who are misled believers of their religious cult, and to whom I bring the teachings of truth, as I do to all earth humans. The Israelites have ravaged this land through plunder and murder, they have killed their friends with whom they had drunk wine, and they have deceived and misled their fellow believers of the Jewish cult who are truly not Israelites but merely believers in the cult. Thus the Israelites betrayed their own friends and murdered them because of their greed, but it shall likewise be done to them by the rightful owners of this land whom they have deprived of their rights and subjugated since ancient times. And when he sat on the Mount of Olives his disciples came up to him and said, Tell us, when will this take place, and what will be the sign? And Jmandel answered, saying, Two thousand and more years will pass, but meanwhile Israel will never find peace because wars and many calamities will threaten the unlawful occupants of this land, but see to it that nobody leads her astray. That is, many deceivers and false prophets will come in my name and say, El M. Jmanuel, and I am the sign of the time come when they will mislead many. People will hear about wars and threats of war, and they are to witness this but not be frightened because it must transpire, but it will not yet be the end. For many a nation will rise up against its government, one nation against another and one kingdom against another, and there will be times of privation, earthquakes and immense storms and floods all about. All of these events are just the beginnings of the woes. Soon the knowledgeable people will be consigned to misery and will be killed. They will be hated on account of the truth of the teachings and the wisdom. Various religious cults will rise up against one another, 
and much blood will flow. Then many will succumb to the temptation, and they will betray and hate one another because they remain small in consciousness. Love will grow cold in many people because ignorance will gain the upper hand. Hatred will rule over the world and evil will reign, but those who persist in the truth will survive. This lesson will be preached in the new age throughout the world as a testimony for all peoples, and then the end will come. When the people see the horror of destruction in Jerusalem, of which the prophets have spoken, the end will come. Whoever is in the land seized by the Israelites should flee to the mountains at that time. Those on the roofs should not climb down to get things from inside their houses. Those who are in the fields should not go back to get their coats. Woe to the pregnant women and nursing mothers at that time, for they will suffer much grief and death, and there will be many of them. Soon thereafter there will be a greater grief than there has ever been before since the beginning of the world, and than will ever be again. If these days were not cut short, no one would survive, but the days will be cut short for the sake of the spirit and of life. This will also be for the sake of the people who serve the truth and the laws. But there will be howling and chattering of teeth when this time is brought about by the people's lack of understanding and by their greed. They will construct machines of metal for use in the air, on the water and on land, and will bring about mutual destruction. From these machines of metal they will fling heavy projectiles across the land and upon the cities. Fire will burst from these projectiles and burn the world, and little will be spared. They will place the basic elements of life and deadly air into the projectiles to kindle the deadly fires and destroy land and life. If at that time mighty nations were not to intervene, as once did the celestial suns, to bring a halt to the unrestrained madness and deadly conduct of demented dictators, truly, I tell you, no human being would survive. Since the human populations will consist of far more than 10 times 500 million people at that time, great segments of them will be eradicated and killed. This is what the law ordains, because people have violated it and will continue to violate it into the distant future. If at that time someone will tell the people, Behold, here is Jmadul who is the sign of the time, comma, they should not accept it as the truth. For many a false jmadal and many deceivers and false prophets will come forth and perform great signs and miracles, so that it will become possible to lead astray not only the seekers, believers and errant ones, but also the scholars and knowledgeable people. Behold, I have told you this beforehand, and so it will fulfill itself. Thus, when the deceivers and those led astray will say, he is in the desert, the people should not venture there, and when they say, Behold, he is in a chamber, they should not accept it as the truth. Since I will certainly return at that time, I will let them recognize me. This is as the law and destiny ordain it, and so it shall be. For as lightning flashes and illuminates from start to finish, so will be my coming in the future when I will bring the teachings anew and announce the legions of the celestial sons. At that time I will have a renewed life, and will again be accused of deception and blasphemy across the entire world, until the teachings of truth will bring about insight and change in the people.